，啪啪啦。Ah,、uh, a little short circuit this morning. In the morning, in the morning, short circuit in the morning. Marcus Conti reporting. I'm going to keep kicking the can of Venezuela down the road. Keep kicking the van, kicking the kicking that van, kicking that can down the road on Venezuela. Why? Because Venezuela right now is our is our cosmic mirror. It's our it's the American. Look at it that way. It's like an, a reflection of how we're treating the world around us. It's how how we. How we treat our neighbors, how we how, how we profess truth from the highest branches of office. Right, that's what Venezuela is showing us right now. And one of the arguments has been that Venezuela is a dictatorship. It's an oppressive dictatorship where there's no elections, or the elections are rigged. Right, so there's there's significant evidence that that too is a lie. Right, significant, substantial evidence coming right from the highest office, the good president. Jimmy Carter, now in his 90s, still alive, said it. He, his foundation supervised elections down in Venezuela, and uh, and uh, we're gonna we'll look at we'll take a look at that. And uh, it's just a, again just another lie, you know. Pompeo is the, and and the the evil access of Pompeo, Trump, Pence, Abra Abrams, Steve Mnuchin, right? It's, it's bad news, right? They're lying. They're still lying their asses off. So, I、oh, thank you,、uh, Susie Elgin, for bringing this to our attention. So here we go. So, former U.S. President、uh, Carter, Venezuelan Venezuela's electoral system, quote, best in the world. <laughs> I thought it was a sham. I thought it was a ripoff. And well, meanwhile, our 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 elections are a sham and a ripoff, and there's insane voter rigging in our country, right? But、uh, Venezuela is worse, right? And and they deserve to be overthrown. Right, so let's watch this. This is the headquarters of the National Electoral Commission, known by its Spanish acronym as the CNE, one of the five independent branches of government of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Its task is to oversee and administer the electoral process in the country, and it is headed by five officials, including members of both the current administration as well as the political opposition. The Real News spoke with one of the five officials at the CNE, Tania de Amelio. She explains that Venezuela has updated its completely automated electoral system with an integrated thumbprint identification program used to activate the machines for each voter and ensure that their vote remains secret and secure. In addition to the digital touchscreen recognition, voters also receive a paper receipt, leaving both a digital and paper trail that can be easily traced and audited. The we tried that in this country. If we tried that in this country, you can't even take a picture. Do you know that that it's illegal? To take a picture of your ballot when you when you vote, and if you snap a little shot, that's that's a misdemeanor. And you know what the the argument is that, oh, you're gonna go and sell your vote. It it's so ridiculous, right? It's it's so that there's no paper trail. That's the point of making it illegal to leave a paper trail. Well, Venezuela has it. They got a thumbprint. They got a、uh, it's it's、uh, you get a receipt to 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 as a、uh, if you ever wanted to challenge the election. Very fair, very open, right? Amelio says the real strength of the electoral system is the capacity to audit every step of the electoral process in conjunction with representatives of the opposition. La fortaleza de nuestra de de nuestro proceso es el proceso de auditoría. Nosotros hacemos en el Consejo Nacional Electoral aproximadamente más de diecisiete auditorías. En la cual participan todas las organizaciones con fines políticos. ¿Qué significa eso? Que el Consejo. So it doesn't operate independently of the political organization, right? It has 17 ways to audit. Nacional electoral no hace su proceso aislado de las organizaciones con fines políticos. No. Todas nuestras auditorías, es decir, la auditoría de registro electoral, la auditoría de las máquinas, la auditoría del pre despacho, la tinta indeleble, entre otras auditorías, las organizaciones con fines políticos están presentes. Es decir, ellos validan paso a paso todo el proceso electoral. The Carter Center, which was founded by former U.S. President Jimmy Carter in 1982. Is a nonprofit human rights organization with a self-described emphasis on seeking to prevent and resolve conflicts, enhance freedom and democracy, and improve health around the world. Founder and former President Jimmy Carter recently stated, "As a matter of fact, of the 92 elections that we've monitored, I would say the election process in Venezuela is the best in the world." The best. Hector Vanoli, director of the Carter. <laughs> the best in the world. The so so. 
I mean, it's just a staggering, staggering fact that that's the opposite of what Pompeo and Abrams and and Trump and Pence are saying, right? That's that's exactly the opposite of what they're saying. It's a brutal dictatorship. Here's some of the. This is this is a pretty good. Uh, here's some of the the interpretations. This was done by uh, Caitlin Johnstone. Not going to skin off the ball, Caitlin Johnstone. I stand. These are just these are just interpretations of what the crooked politicians in our country are saying. I stand with the Venezuela people of Venezuela. Means I stand with some of the people in Venezuela, specifically the ones who support U.S. government interests. Quote interim president. That means some guy most Venezuelans have never heard of until January of this year. Right? Quote brutal dictator equals leader who opposes U.S. Dictates. <laughs> uh, it's the fucking opposite. Usurper. Uh, that's the guy calling the shots and leading the country. Opposition-led military back challenge. That's a coup. Uh, the people of Venezuela are starving. It's all about the oil. Oil, oil, oil. All options are on the table. Uh, the one option is on the table. They're going to take over. Uh, they're going to try to push their way in. Quote, Popular uprising means unpopular uprising. Grassroots activism. <laughs> right? That's what they're saying. Right? They're saying grassroots activism is causing the upheaval in, in, uh, in Venezuela. Let's pretend the CIA is not a thing. Freedom and democracy. That means U.S. control of Venezuela's petroleum resources. Right? Humanitarian aid <laughs> equals pretext for further escalation. Failed socialist policies equals inability to overcome U.S. economic warfare. Uh, <laughs> right? You create warfare, you, you sanction, you, 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 know, you, hold, you, hold, you scare all their friends out of the neighborhood, nobody wants to trade with them, right? Then the empire steps in, and then you call it, uh, you call it uh, it's failing because it's uh, social, socialist policies. Foreign inter interference equals an ally of Venezuela supporting its allies, like China and Russia and India. We support the National Assembly. That is foreign intervention. Right, so there's some of the some of the cool slogans. Uh, so so again, so F Carter gave his Jimmy Carter gave his uh, his stamp of approval to this thing, right? Here's an interesting article. The real Venezuela is not what you think. Right? Um, so I just returned from my from observing my fourth election in Venezuela in less than one year. Jimmy Carter has called Venezuela's elections the quote best in the world, and I was I and and what I witnessed was an inspiring process that guarantees one person one vote, and includes multiple auditing process procedures to ensure a free and fair election. I came. I then came home to the United States to see the inevitable news coverage referring to Venezuela as a dictatorship and as a country in need of saving. This coverage not only ignores the reality of Venezuela, it ignores the fact that the U.S. is the greatest uh, impediment to democracy in Venezuela. Just as the U.S. has been an impediment to democracy throughout Latin America since the, since the end of the 19th century. Prior to Venezuelan presidential election on May 20th, an election which included an opposition candidate, Henry Falcone, from the business community, the U.S. government announced that it would not recognize the outcome no matter who won. <laughs> uh, the United States has gone so far as to threaten Mr. Falcone with sanctions, even if, even if he just ran in the election. The U.S. has also, th also threatened further economic sanctions on Venezuela if incumbent leftist Nicolas Maduro won. And so this is a, an article before uh, Maduro got, uh, got in, uh, or got re-in, re whatever, got re-elected. Right? The U.S. Um, um, President uh, Falcone's economic advisor has said we're leading... Oh, well, the United States has also threatened further economic sanctions on Venezuela if incumbent leftist Nicolas Maduro won. Sanctions that even Mr. Falcone's economic advisor has said were leading to the collapse of Venezuelan economy. Trump kept to his promise in this regard, announcing more wonderous sanctions that the day the election of the election. 
which will further uh, immiserate the Venezuelan people. Immiserate. Meanwhile, while members of the, of the more radical right-wing opposition and themselves been calling for presidential elections and had agreed to hold them in May, the U.S. leaned on them to back out of this deal before it was signed. Following this, the radical opposition backed by the U.S. called for people to boycott the vote. Right, so when the, you remember the, that the, 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 the election against Maduro, the U.S. was calling to boycott it, right? Because the, for some reason, the U.S. doesn't like the, 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 doesn't like the outcome. They, they, want, they want to change. They want regime change. The result was that Maduro won in a landslide. Right? And, it, and the U.S. is calling it a, a, an illegitimate election. He has an Ill- illegitimate, um, it's, just, it's just all lies. The whole thing that the U.S. is telling us about, our government is telling us about the situation here. It's just, I can't find any truth to it at all. Uh, so, but it, it was not only the boycott observed mostly in wealthier communities, as I witnessed, that won the day for Maduro. There were other reasons uh, you will hear, you will never hear about in the U.S. press. First, the true patriots of Venezuela, not surprisingly, represent, resent the United States' devastating economic sanctions as well as its constant call for regime change. Some U.S. officials even talk of military intervention to overthrow Maduro. That's becoming more relative now. That's, that's relevant now. That's going to happen. In part, the vote for Maduro was a vote against U.S. meddling in the affairs of Venezuela. Ah, so the people are aware. The people of Venezuela are aware. They're awake. In addition, despite the real hardships in Venezuela, for which the U.S. is largely to blame, most of Venezuelans poor are better off now than they were before the Bavarian Revolution of Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro. Do you hear that, Pence? They're better off now than they were. For example, over the past seven years, the government has built two million units of housing for low-income Venezuelans in a, in a country of only 30 million people. Two million, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a huge percentage of, of housing built. They don't, we should do that here. Right? We've got people living in tents in San Francisco. You've got people living under the bridge or right, right in my neighborhood when it gets warm. Right? The current government also uh, has provided free health care and subsidized food. Ah, just what we need, right? Before Chavez, the sprawling poor barrios which ringed the cities, were literally not on any government maps, and they had no utilities and no uh, election centers. After Chavez, the existence of these barrios was recognized for the first time, and they were provided with utilities, health services, election, election stations, and most important, dignity. Chavez even started a world-class music program. Right? Grateful for a government on their side and flouting U.S. extortion, the poor came out to vote in large numbers for Maduro. These are the same poor, by the way, who came down from the mountains in 2002 to demand the return of Hugo Chavez to power after he was overthrown in a U.S. coup and kidnapped. We kidnapped their president because of the, again, it's because of the oil. Not only that is a speculation that when U.S. had him in their custody, that they, they, they jacked him with that uh, fast cancer. And Hugo Chavez ultimately, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not at that time. But the, the speculation is that the U.S., you know, zapped him with, with a fast cancer. You never hear the voices of these poor people in the U.S. press. You never hear their side of the story, how they have uh, benefited from the Bavarian Revolution and how desperately they do not want to go back to how things were before. That's what they're fighting for. They're, the opposition is trying to impress, oppress them, and they're fighting to keep the imperialism out, united. While they have been given a voice in Venezuela, it remains muzzled in this country. And by a press which presses, passes off pro-intervention and pro-war propaganda as journalism. It is no wonder the United States continues to caran into one disastrous military adventure after another. No, it's not a wonder. So here's, here's one grand ball. One grand ball and one grand ball. I would rule like one grand ball. One grand ball. Here's one grand ball. Venezuela's one grand ball says he overestimated military support. The failed coup. 
The one that Pompeo said was that 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 Maduro was on the tarmac ready to get on a plane and fly the hell out of there, right? You remember the lie? It's all the fucking lie, right? So so uh, we we still need more soldiers to support it to back the Constitution. Guaido said, he said he would be he would consider an offer of military assistance if the U.S. made one. Uh, just stop right there. Could you imagine if if a political a party or a political opponent to Trump stood up in the in the in the square and said that we would be I would be willing to I would be willing if Russia invaded the country I would be willing to take over I'd be willing right just appoint me Russia come in drop some bombs blow up the White House blow up the Pentagon get rid of them and I'll take over right? that's the equivalent right and 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 for Maduro to oppose that is uh Somehow a dictatorship. It's, it's really, really crazy. So here's Pompeo. Right? Let's listen to the, the liar in chief, right? So now what you know about, now, now what you've just learned about it, let's listen to Pompeo. To the people of Venezuela, the United States sees your courage in action. We see you proudly reclaiming the freedom and democracy that is rightfully yours. We admire you. We stand with you. Last month, I visited Cucuta, Colombia, and saw firsthand the misery that Maduro has created with the Russians and Cubans' help. The Russians and the Cubans' help creating misery that he saw at the border. Where? What, what misery? There's never been any report of misery. You see a couple of, couple of poor people trying to jump over the fence because of, again, the, the, the raining down of sanctions, right? The, they're, they're, they're choking the people, U.S. These same scenes of desperation are playing out all across Venezuela. They must end. The time for transition is now. No more. There is no evidence of any of that spreading across Venezuela. No evidence. Starvation. No more children without medicine. No more repression. The United States stands firmly with you in your quest. We call on all members of the international community to do the same. Your bravery and your voices will put Venezuela on the path to liberty and prosperity. You can hold your institutions, your military, and their leaders to the highest standards and demand a return to democracy. A return to democracy. We, don't you, he didn't, I guess he didn't get the memo that they have a democracy and they have one of the most free and fair election systems in the world, ranked the best by a former United States president, Jimmy Carter. You can restore an inclusive and constitutional government. You can. They have a constitutional government, right? They have that. All lies. Create the future, indeed a bright future, for yourselves, for your children, and for Venezuela. It's just a, it's just a pack of lies, right? Is it? I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal and stole. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal and stole. It's, it was like... Thanks, Mike. We, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. I, I was entire the CIA director. Course. We lied, we cheated, we steal and stole. It's, it's so... Like, we, we had... We had in, so that's where we are again. Right? So Venezuela, just keep kicking the can. You know, you got to talk about it, right? So they got free and fair elections. Jimmy Carter called it out a couple of years ago. They, they observed it. But then there's just, again, this sweeping, sweeping uh, stream of lies from Elliot Abrams, from Mike Pompeo, from Mike Pence, from Donald Trump, from Steve Mnuchin, from John Bolton, mustache man, right? Just a concerted lie. Right? So we swept out, we... we we switched out the swamp, but you know, I, I know there's a there's a, a vast majority, the core of the oh the the truthers, they're gonna they're gonna crack the the the, the mystery of the deep state, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna drain that deep state swamp. That's what they're gonna do, right? It's so fucking the anons, the anons are rising. They they're cleaning up the corruption. What? And then you've you've already you're missing the point that the corruption you're the the corruption. You're seeking to overturn is already gone. You got it. the new corruption has already taken over, while you're while you got your head up your ass chasing after some 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 fantasy Japanese you know Japanese fucking board right. That's what's going on right now. The swamp they already switched out the swamp. Didn't you hear? Can't you see it? Right? They're on TV right now saying socialist oppressors so that you don't get health care in this country. So you so that the military operations throughout the world and the insurgency wars continue 
Uh, that's that's what's going on. Big oil, they don't want no fucking solar panels on your roof. They don't want you having, harnessing the power of the sun. They want you to buy the fucking oil, man. Pay your electric bill. All right, that's what's going on. Uh, what's the matter with you, man? Aren't you an American? Don't you like capitalism? Aren't you? You're not a capitalist. You're you want you want a social program? What are you weak? That's what's going on. Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly become a Patreon of this channel, and um, this is how I support the uh, the effort. And um, you can also buy stickers on eBay. And uh, Marcus Conte reporting. Don't forget to subscribe. YouTube, they're, they're chopping us down. Censorship on the rise.